So two weeks ago, we had a ton of this drama around PlayStation with the Helldivers 2 situation. Then it shifted over to Xbox, where we heard Xbox is dead, Game Pass is trash, uh, fire the liar, fire the liar. We we started having all of this drama, and just this week, we started hearing once again about Helldivers situation, Ghost of Sushi, or I should say, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, my yeah. bad. Ghost of Tsushima, the game that's based off of Japan, is apparently getting banned in Japan. Yeah, so the PC version, <laughs> PC version is getting banned in Japan, and today, the drama is shifting once again over onto the PlayStation. Guys, there's a video that I want to share with you, get ready for the climax. Shout out to every single one of you for smashing likes on the last video on the yesterday video you guys killed it by 900 likes oh, shit. Sh shout out to all of you guys I, I guess you guys don't wanna don't wanna see Abby the Brock Lesnar maybe that's what it is like the video if you don't wanna see Abby Zilla uh, again but check this out so Mudahar comes out says that this tweet made me switch to Xbox I'm going somewhere with this one all right wait for it Mudahar said this because uh, brother came out and brother says that PS5 owners are now treated like black people in 1939 USA yeah <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again, right? We are now second class gamers and neither Sony or Square Enix care about us anymore. Just like black people had to give up their civil rights, we PlayStation gamers are having to forfeit our exclusives. And a ton of people got mad, guys. A ton of people started rolling. Comments are flooding in. Everybody's going around. And, and, and hey man, listen, I gotta say this as a brown man. I'm sick and tired of everybody playing that race card here, guys. Bruh. But uh, roll this. Check this out. Like the video. Subscribe if you're brand new. Thank you all for all the, the likes and subscribes on the channel recently. You guys are killing it. Uh, all right, roll it. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. And today we're talking about some PlayStation drama involving the business of Square Enix. For the last couple years, there has been some sort of secret unknown partnership between PlayStation and the very famous RPG maker Square Enix. Their games yeah. have not only been coming to PlayStation, but a lot of them have been straight up exclusive. Yeah. Back to back games like back Final Fantasy and Foam Stars and all sorts of stuff uh -oh. has only been coming to the PS5. And it seems like that may have backfired. Yeah, today they came out and they just said, Psych! They pulled a side card, guys. They pulled a side Let's card. Let's take a look at it because today they have officially announced Square Enix is going to stop even attempting exclusives because it's losing them so much money. Let's discuss. Hi, I hope you're having a great day. <laughs> if you could, give this video a like and subscribe yep, if you haven't already. Like like and subscribe guys now this news just came out uh -oh. a couple hours ago and to be honest it feels like the internet is mostly celebrating it because it sounds like this yeah. new direction the idea is to try and make it so anybody who wants the games can buy it Look at this. Yeah. If we can start getting Final Fantasy games day one on PC, that, that would, would be, be amazing, amazing for, for gamers. gamers. Now, personally, I'm obsessed with Final Fantasy. It is my favorite franchise of all time. So this idea... Uh, and here, uh, I only remember playing for like 20 minutes back in the PS3 days. Yeah. How many of you guys actually play Final Fantasy? Would you recommend it? Would you recommend it? I just never got into it, man. The uh, yeah, I, I blame myself, bro. I blame myself. Uh, I grew up playing Call of Duty, Battlefield, GTA. Uh, some story games, so I would say like that's the only good part uh, about like my uh, gameplay or gameplay collection is that I had some like single player games or a lot of really good single player games. But I general generally speaking, I grew up playing Call of Duty's Battlefield and uh, GTA games. Guys. So, sa sadly, sadly, I'm aware. I'm aware, guys. I'm aware. I'm aware. Idea of making PC ports alongside sadly, the sadly. main games. This to me makes perfect sense. I mean, like what they're doing right now with Final Fantasy 16, where they completely made the game and all DLC on PS5 and then rebuilt the game for PC. Stuff like that yeah. is a weird gap. But Microsoft reading this news be like, <laughs> because those things are, uh, where are the games? Phil Spencer always says, yo, gaming for everyone, gaming, let me actually show you guys this, right? Like, we had a ton of drama surrounding Phil Spencer not long ago, right? And this is why, like, we had the homie Dreamcast guy, it was his birthday as well, plus bad Xbox news, that's like a recipe of disaster now, like, come on, guys, come on, man, like, he ended up dropping, like, quadruple video on the same day, Xbox is dead, Game Pass <laughs> Game Pass trash, fire the liner, fire. Oh my god, oh my god. We, we had, listen man, here, it's just gaming news at the end of the day, I'm not clowning on Dreamcast guy, I, 
I live for comedy like that, okay? I live for comedy like that because there's really nothing going on in gaming aside from this bad news. And today, I, I guess this is good news. I, I, I guess it's good, good news. Not for everybody though, because some people uh, are saying that, bro, like this is like segregation. This is like worse than uh, black people getting treated all the way back in 1939 USA. So yeah, this is how these tweets started rolling in and started pouring in. I guess now you get the context, but uh-oh, we got a lot more guys. Roll this. But a lot of people are being like, like all right, uh, Sony is going to try and buy their entire company. I don't think so, but let's actually take a look at this article. So this is over on IGN, and we're going to take a look at a couple journalists who have been arguing uh -oh. about this because some of the points Wait made in this financial report, they're definitely up for interpretation. So here it is. Square Enix has announced a significant company reboot amid tumbling profits. So today they decided to report they their financial money. sort of performance. Translation, they lost money and that knocked some sense uh, in these suckers ass. Yeah, uh, they lost money and now watch them actually try to be better and yeah, get, get woke, go broke. Apparently they also did go a little bit woke. I wouldn't say they went like crazy woke or ultra woke. Everybody got a different definition though so there's that some people would say that nah bro like schizo they went ultra woke bro they went they went ultra woke okay fair but like in my opinion they they went like a little bit woke not ultra woke but but uh yeah get woke go broke i guess right how they did last year and it sounds like for the most part they are selling more games and yet their profit is going down mm -hmm. it, it sounds like the, you know despite the fact that money, final fantasy 16 money. the final fantasy pixel remasters foam stars final fantasy 7 rebirth so many of these games came out and were six I, I don't think final fantasy was woke actually my bad uh, i take that back uh, i was uh, specifically looking at forespoken yeah forespoken was it had that dei and uh, uh, a little bit of that crap yeah successful but somehow it wasn't enough they made I, I don't know about final fantasy those of you that play yeah let me know if it is or not i don't think it is but it might be I don't two million dollars of an operating loss they lost 52 million dollars despite the fact that they dropped a mainline final fantasy a final fantasy remake and also totally new games as a service project but Holy. that's part of the reason they're losing so they lost like 50, almost 52 million us dollars okay I, I guess i'm not gonna ask them about two, my two pennies because normally i'd be like can a brother get two pennies I, I guess they need the two pennies this time can a brother give can a brother see you guys give them the two pennies right <laughs> yeah like the video if you if you're also not gonna ask for the two pennies there we wanted to be honest but it, here we go final fantasy 16 and rebirth both launched exclusively on the playstation 5 and square enix has announced sales for ff16 and they said okay. that went well but they've been pretty secretive about how successful on paper the ff7 rebirth project has been so they said this we are suffering an incomplete journey to better profitability in HD game development. We've had many games launch, but some failed to live up to profit expectations, especially outsourced titles and some AAA stuff. So it seems like they're talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at least being included in that. So we're going to take a look at the financial forecast, but I think what the initial knee-jerk reaction is is definitely the fact that Video game development is getting more and more expensive, and when I think about a game like Forspoken, which let's face yeah. it, this oh, game sucked. This I hated on it. Everybody <laughs> hated on it. In fact, I've never mentioned this in a video before, but uh, Square Enix, yeah. when I reviewed this and I roasted it, they were not happy with me. <laughs> but because of that game's immediate failure, they ended up shutting down the studio that made it. it. Almost not even six months after the game came out and totally bombed, the studio just got completely shuttered in an effort to, I guess, you know, stop losing money on, you know, unsuccessful... I, I, I guess get will go broke or get will get shut don't down. Go, go, go. And, and these like, things still want to, like, hire Sweet Baby Ink. They still want to be like, we need Sweet Baby Ink. We need strong, independent. We need stunning. We need brave. Uh, uh, yeah, according to them, this is stunning and brave, but this is like, brother, ew, brother, ew, right? That's what happens. Bruh. Yeah, get woke, go broke, or in this case, get woke, get shut down. Similar thing happened with Saints Woke, or uh, my bad, uh, Saints Row, Saints Row, right? Bruh. That went woke, and then people started calling them Saints Woke, like, and that's the first thing I called them, too, like, bruh, like, see, it's just deep, it's, like, engraved in my mind right now, it's like, Everybody started calling them Saint Smoke, and I, I even forgot the name of the, the, the studio. I, I, I don't even know the studio name. I also almost forgot the name of the game, but thankfully it came back here. So Saints Row went woke, the studio went woke, and ultimately they had to shut down. Why y'all suckers do that? Why? For what reason? Por qué? 
It's like, dog, make the game for the audience. Know your audience. And you seconds know that's a, that's the most bizarre part about this is that they know their audience. They really know their audience, but they still want to be like, we want to have stunning, we want to have brave, we want to be strong and independent. Meanwhile, they know their audience don't like that strong, independent bull squash. And, and they're still like, okay, let me let me hire uh, Sweet Baby Ink. And Sweet Baby Ink comes in, gives it a Sweet Baby Ink kiss of death, which is the classic, Bruh. right? And then it, it's like, studio gets shut down. Studio gets shut down, guys. Studio gets shut down, yeah. Profit endeavors. But it is weird to think that they, maybe that would have been more successful if you could have bought Wait it on PC it. day one. But going back to the article in response to tumbling profits square enix announced that it's trying to do a square enix reboot and awakens they have a three-year plan for rebooting long-term growth this involves a rethink across all parts of business but the highlight is a shift to a multi-platform strategy square enix said it will aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy that includes nintendo platforms playstation xbox and pc now it is interesting that we are about to get the next Nintendo Switch. There have been a lot of very confirmed leaks that the Nintendo Switch is actually going to be a, a little bit more powerful than the PlayStation 4, uh, a little bit weaker than an Xbox Series S. So it will definitely be able to play bigger open world games yeah. like a lot of the more recent Square Enix projects have been. But a lot of people are actually talking about this because yeah. there is a little bit debate as to how successful or unsuccessful these games have been. Right now, Final Fantasy is still on top. Final Fantasy is definitely crazy. the big That's money crazy. maker for That's Square crazy. Enix, but they did also launch Dragon, Dragon Quest, Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince, which I'll be honest, I completely farted, forgot existed. But uh, completely farted. <laughs> you almost said that. You almost said that. It happens to all of us. But as we get down to the climax, sir, Brett, I want to say, guys, I have a second channel. This is where we upload UFO content, conspiracy content every single day okay i also have a third channel I, I don't think i have to tell you what type of content we upload here Bruh. but like yeah ch definitely check it out this was absolutely hilarious now you're a single mom those of you that know you know if you don't know definitely check it out check out the top and comment below all my youtube channels are linked including twitch twitter instagram and there's also a secret link yay check out the secret link as well all right let's get back to the content now boo boo it sounds like the major thing is that the typical money makers for Square Enix has been their B tier stuff. The stuff that's definitely not getting like crazy headlines, but things like their MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, I love that. It has a subscription, so a lot of times they make hundreds of millions of dollars on that. It has been a down year for the game because the next expansion comes out this year. There's always that lull where before the next big release, everybody stops playing temporarily to kind of a, I don't know, save up their energy for the next big push. But Man. Here's the other thing. They put a lot of money into Dragon Quest Champions, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Essentially, a lot of their cell phone stuff ended up bleeding money. Well, here's journalist Paul Tassi chiming in about why he thinks that people are not understanding the raw basics of it. They just didn't sell enough games. They straight up said, hey, we're selling games. We have hype. We have numbers. We have... Uh, don't, don't you guys have phones? I, I thought you guys had phones, though. Better than reading only what you want to read. Lol, no, that headline is straight misinformation. Profited, profit dropped. <laughs> <laughs> they announced a multi-platform plan this side low profitability of hd games i don't know what else you need here yeah okay so both of them are kind of fighting okay. fans that are dedicated to us but we're just not able to compensate for how much it costs to make this stuff being on a singular platform even if it let, let's actually assume that playstation okay. is paying 20 percent let's assume that sony is stepping in and saying hey if you put ff7 rebirth or ff16 exclusively on our platform and it costs just for easy math let's say it costs 300 million dollars to make that means they're paying what 175 million dollars to have that as an exclusive that's a lot or even if they are just taking yeah. over the marketing branch that is still hundreds of millions of dollars saved because marketing is very expensive uh can a brother then get like two pennies or something like that like i, I yeah right like <laughs> Like, these, these things are spending, like, what, 100 million plus on marketing, making the game. I, 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 am I wrong in asking for two pennies? I, I feel like that this should be part of their budget. Uh, go, like, with all the games, okay? I absolutely stand behind this one. Like the video if you agree, dislike if you disagree. Here's the thing, okay? Uh, if you agree, definitely like the video. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not. Dislike if you disagree, or let me know if you disagree. But I, I truly, in my hearts of hearts, I do believe that there needs to be a budget, okay? They, these companies need to make a budget of like $100 million where they pay their gamers uh, 
they pay to you guys just to play the game. <laughs> Am I wrong here? Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong here, guys. I I, I think this is gonna boost up sales big time. Uh, and, and you know what? People that play the game, they also get rewarded, right? All of us get rewarded. I, I think because nowadays, like, playing AAA games is like a horror story. It's, it's torture. It is torture. Playing games in 2024 is torture. <laughs> yeah, here I said it. Here I said it. So what? So what? Right, as a, as a brown man, I'm sick and tired of everybody playing the race card, and as a brown man, I'm sick and tired of uh, these AAA, AAA games right now that is just killing games and coming out incomplete at launch. Am I am I wrong here? I don't think I'm wrong. I think you're right, I'm right, we're all right here. Especially like, but if we're all right here. I think we're all right here. I, I still think it's bizarre to think that as big as these titles have been, as successful as FF16 has been just when it comes yeah. to conversation and hype and for raw sales in general, it's not enough to keep up with these hundreds of million dollar budgets. Look at this. Your headline is straight misinformation. Uh, Zuby Tech, very, uh, I like him. He tweets a lot of stuff that's very PlayStation centric. Uh, yeah. He kind of defends PlayStation more than your typical person, though. Profit dropped. They announced a multi plat. He defends PlayStation. <laughs> Says Dreamcast guy. Brother, brother, you defend... I, I would like to believe... And there's nothing wrong in defending or liking a platform over the other. There's nothing wrong in that. But like, bruh, like you defend PlayStation way more than Zuby Tag though. Come on now, bruh. Come on now, man. Form plan. They cite low profitability. I don't know what else you need. They cite it specifically why, as reposted. Because two seg segments saw profit declines does not mean they're entirely responsible for profit declines. And sales increasing are not the same as profits. You're not reading this correctly. Essentially, I have seen some PlayStation fans in general a bit confused by this push because it does seem like Sony is in an odd spot. Yeah. PlayStation is gigantic. The PS5, if you actually look at console sales numbers, they go up and up and up. I mean, just in general, the PlayStation is the biggest console on the planet. I think the Nintendo Switch obviously still is earning a ton of money, but sales of the, the Nintendo Switch have been down because there's no real big Nintendo Switch games yeah, this year. Yeah, there's not like yeah. a new Pokemon or a Mario or a Zelda, like the typical system sellers. True, that's there's true, nothing that's like true, that. True. And everybody's waiting for the Nintendo Switch 2, so nobody's buying the Nintendo Switch. So if you're true, actually true, talking true. about the most active spending consumer base in the gamer console market, it is the PlayStation 5. So I think Sony betting on this partnership was a smart move that just didn't pan out. I yeah. think everybody is still trying to... Yeah, because like the Xbox gamers have been conditioned by Phil Spencer to... And listen, man, even I, as somebody who does not have Xbox, even I have to agree that Game Pass for the gamers is actually a good thing, generally speaking. Now, of course, if you only play one or two games, right, then of course it's not. Then you're better off just buying the game as is. Even then, a lot of people would say that, hey, you will own, uh, you will own nothing. There, there's a quote like that, right? You will buy it, but you're not gonna, you're gonna pay for it, but you're gonna own n none of it. You're not never gonna own it. I agree with that. Absolutely. This is basically where we're going. In, in fact, we already are, uh, I would say more than halfway through this situation, especially with Game Pass. Yeah, you don't own it at all, though. All the games that it comes with, you don't own it at all because it's a subscription base, right? You stop paying for it. You, you, uh, they revoke your access. You then cannot play the games. I mean, that's simple, right? But if you're somebody that plays all a lot of games a lot of different games you play on a daily basis or not necessarily on a daily basis but let's just say like uh, hey you put in like an hour or two every day or or every other day you put in like three hours or maybe uh, collectively as a week you put in like 10 hours or less than that playing the games right and you play a lot of different games then game pass is a very good model but if you're somebody that only plays call of duty fortnite Bruh. <laughs> general games right uh, and you don't buy or play any other games then getting xbox game pass then oh I, I okay then i understand it's not really really smart but microsoft has really really conditioned the xbox fans and xbox players to get game pass uh, I, I don't blame the gamers i don't blame the xbox fans or anybody because if i had xbox i would be getting game pass too oh hell yeah i would be getting game pass too oh hell yeah because it's cheap 
and you get hundreds and hundreds of games. Absolutely. But see, now we're finding out, and this is why we had a ton of this drama. Of course, the drama is primarily because they shut down the Hi-Fi Rush Studio, and also all the past stuff that Phil Spencer said, gaming for everyone, gaming for everyone, gaming for everyone. Games are coming, games are coming. It says the same thing every year, but games are never coming. Bruh. And of course, Redfall, Redfail, one of the biggest doozy that Xbox dropped. Starfield, there was a lot of hype, there was a lot of fuss. Sickers were murdering everybody on the Twitter streets, metaphorically speaking not like literally but like metaphorically speaking if you even took some time to think if uh, a starfield was a, a a good game or a bad game you were you're gonna get shot down by the xbox fans like simply you need to give that game 10 out of 10 or or you'll get you're dying tonight right metaphorically speaking of course but like yeah so now that shifted to now everybody collectively agreeing that yeah starfield was like a bruh ish game it didn't do that well and right now the game is completely dead right like nobody really talks about it and whenever people talk about it they either say it's trash or it's like a, a, a average below average game right so xbox is having a lot of issues and we recently heard that game pass is also not making them the money oh, oh, not shit. my opinion not my opinion this is what's being reported the only thing that's making them substantial amount of money is the acquisition of Activision Blizzard that's making them the profit right now that's making them a lot of money even right now and they're debating whether to put Call of Duty on Game Pass or not and previously they said that Activision is uh, games over at okay I gotta like stop showing you the thumbnail <laughs> that thumbnail but, but but they're debating whether to put Game Pass uh, or Call of Duty on Game Pass or not prior to that they said all the Activision games and they're still saying they're gonna come but we're fi uh, hearing news that there may be or there might not be so we'll find out very very soon so they really have condition and playstation players yeah sure they they do buy games and square enix uh, i i guess even then they were like okay we're not making enough money though even though like playstation players buy <laughs> are we still not making enough money okay so now i guess they're pulling out and they're they're pulling a site they're saying psych and they're going third party which is good i mean uh of course, them ending exclusivity is good for all the gamers collectively, all of us as a whole, right? Absolutely. But uh, I'm not sure how many people specifically buy PlayStation just because of Square Enix games like Final Fantasy and all that, right? I'm not sure. Personally, I don't know. If it's like a large amount of people, then yeah, it can make... Uh, it can like make buying PlayStation 5 a little bit less lucrative. Or lucrative. Or the, the better word would be like less incentive. You're gonna have less incentive buying the PlayStation uh, next time, I guess. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But if Xbox don't F up, if Xbox stop effing up, then maybe they, they can actually come back and uh, come back again. Make games as a service. Or make a comeback rather. And Square Enix has had some very unsuccessful games as a service over the last couple years. Not just Foam Stars, but they tried. What the heck was I can't remember, Babylon's Fall? They did like an online MMO terrible. Oh God. You would equip a bunch of swords at once. I'm not even going to explain what Babylon's Fall is because yeah. I'm the only person that played it and then it just got deleted off the internet and they shut down that company as well. Square Enix is in an odd spot where I do think this experiment will work and, and I want to explain why. A oh, lot of people shit. go to Walmart oh, at like 6 p.m. Right? Okay, I'm going to make right. an analogy here. So you go to Walmart at 6 p.m. even if a lot of times they are 24 hours. You could technically go there at 6 a.m. or 3 a.m. or midnight or you could go there at 3 p.m. But here's my point. A 24-hour business gets more business. It gets more foot traffic because you're not worried. Are they open? Oh, I need this. Oh, there's this 24-hour 24 uh, 24 store up the road. Let's just go there. My thinking is this. When you go fully multi-platform, your sales increase across the board, yeah, not just yeah. on your particular platform. I, I think yeah. this is actually going to lead to more PS5 sales. It's going to lead to more PC sales. I don't think it's going to really sell anything on Xbox, but it'll even sell more on Nintendo Switch because now people don't have to wonder, is the game on my preferred platform? If you know everything they're doing is multi-platform, I think it does encourage you to be more instinctual in your purchase. Okay, I'm not going to... Yeah, I don't think it's going to sell Xbox or uh, what did he say? Did he say like it's not going to sell? xbox or the game is not gonna sell too much on xbox i don't know man i don't know <laughs> but now ultimately a good move ultimately a good move uh, and some people are saying well it's uh just like the segregation though and i'm not sure if you guys were able to catch this video or, or, or on time or not but truly truly insane they apparently ended up getting hacked yeah, we got a video clip that's going viral. I'm not sure if you guys were able to see it or not. You know, the Sweet Baby Ink and all Gamergate that's going on, the woke stuff that's going on, right? 
yeah hacking is getting involved into it as well so check it out and i'll see you right there on the left this video is on my second channel uh so check it out and i'll see you right there